So this is kind of a part two in the series. Uh, you guys are watching the latest and greatest when it comes to updating your email address of the from whenever you're sending out email blast from Klaviyo. In the part one of the series, I've taught you guys how to create your own hello at yourcompany.com, right? And we did that with uh, Gmail, what used to be called G Suite, but now it's called Google Workspace, right? So if you guys missed that video, I'll put the link in the description. Make sure that you guys check out part one of this. Part two, how do we add that special email that we created for customer service inside of Klaviyo? So if you guys have a paying Klaviyo account, go ahead and log in. And once you log in, on the upper right-hand corner, click where it says your business name. And then from there, go to where it says uh, settings or account. Go to account, and then that'll take you to this page right here. So again, click on this one, click on account. It'll take you to a page that looks like this, but by default, you'll be set to overview. So make sure that uh, you click on setting, and then from settings, you're gonna see the sub, uh, sub menu item listed here. And then from here, this sub menu, you're gonna click on where it says domain and hosting. And then from there, let's go ahead and click on this where it says get started. So in other words, what is this all about? It's a dedicated sending domain, uh, domain that will enable your from address, okay, from your emails to match the domain address you're sending from versus uh, this email came from klaviomail.com on those email blasts. You, you don't want that, right? Because then people will know you're using Klaviyo and then it's just, it doesn't look right. It always looks better when they have a professional email. Let's go right here where it says get started. And so what is your root domain? So in our case, it's digopets, digopets.com, okay? And then the sending domain. For the sending domain, we could add the word send, right? Dot digopets or dot your business name, okay? Uh, as a subdomain, or you could put mail, mail.deaglepets, right? You could do something like that, or dot your business name. So right here, it gives you kind of like what you could put it. You could put email, you could put whatever it is that you want. Let's go ahead and uh, press continue. All right, so now it's asking us to go ahead and create more records. So you guys remember the DNS thing? Uh, again, if you guys don't know about this whole DNS situation, go back to my part one of the video of this email thing, and then I'll show you guys how I went using GoDaddy, but you guys kind of get the picture on how to do that. Uh, once you're back here, let's go ahead and add some records. So these are the records that we want to add. Uh, we're going to go back into GoDaddy's DNS system, and we're going to update it. And once we're done updating that, we're going to verify the records uh, before we continue. Let's move ahead. All right, so now that we're back in GoDaddy, uh, let's go ahead and start creating the first record here. So the first record type is going to be a C name, okay? And that is everything I'm instructing you guys right now is from the date of this video. So if things might have changed, uh, just put in the comments, hey, this didn't work for me, so I could go ahead and start asking you questions to see how I could help. All right, so the record is called C name, and the host, or in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add here send okay and then the value the value um, you should see it from that specific page so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that value and just paste it here and then the TTL I was like to put it half an hour and then let's go ahead and add that record okay and once that part is done we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the three records okay let's fast forward that all right, so those records have been added, and we're going to go back over here and get back into the whole Clavio scenario. Uh, just make sure, don't forget, guys, that if you're entering any of these, um, the sendgrid.net, sometimes you might get an error where it says that it's not using the right characters. In my case, I noticed that uh, I didn't add the dot at the end after .net, so sometimes that would help. And also, get rid of certain spacing that's in the beginning. So make sure that this is a clean paste, right? Uh, make sure that there's no spaces when it pastes and also make sure that the, that after the .NET, there's a dot at the end. Uh, sometimes that might have helped, okay? Uh, as mentioned on the previous video, prop, once you add records into your domain, again, this really all depends on who you're using as your domain provider. In our case, it's GoDaddy, but there's other places out there that they sell domains for cheaper, um, they use programs similar to GoDaddy, 
But the thing is, is that propagate, the word propagate, what that means is that it's updating on its server. And sometimes that could take up to 24 hours. Even I've seen some of them that they charge super cheap. But the catch is that they take almost 48 hours in order for you to see something, right? It's, oh, I forget what the name of that company was. But, you know, what I'm saying is GoDaddy is the way to go because it's very useful with a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So if this Verify Records does not work right away, give it at least an hour or two. I say at most two hours, especially if you're using GoDaddy. Uh, and it should get things working. But for now, let's go ahead and test this out. Let's see what happens. Verify Records. All right, taking its sweet time there. Uh, let's see if we can fast forward a bit. All right, so right here we can see that the DNS has been verified and says that you can now apply your dedicated sending domain settings. So let's go ahead and are you sure you want to apply this dedicated sending domain? I understand that I'm newly registered, so I'll need to change my sending behavior for the next two to four weeks uh, for the per infrastructure warming process and cannot contact my entire subscriber list and mass uh, for that period without damaging my deliverability. So this basically what it's saying is, is that instead of sending it everybody for all in one shot, it'll send it just bits and pieces to warm up the infrastructure. I guess it doesn't want to bombard something or get you spam listed and all that good stuff. So we'll say we understand and let's go ahead and apply the domain. Okay, and that's been applied. So, so far so good. We have that uh, pretty much ready to go. And so the last thing I wanna show you guys is to how to update the customer service email from Shopify. So you guys know that in Shopify, once someone places an order, Shopify automatically sends an email out to your customer saying, hey, you just got your order, here it is, right? Or an order confirmation. It's called the customer service email. And the same thing goes for like, let's say there's an order that's already been placed. Um, and you guys want to contact the customer, you could go ahead and click on the email and Shopify automatically creates a dialogue so that you could go ahead and send an email to your client. But instead of it using the Shopify email extension for the email address, it uses your customer service email. That's what we're going to learn on this final piece. So this here, what we're going to do is let's go into the back end of the store real quick. Now, once we're in here, let's go to where it says settings at the bottom left. And from there, let's go to where it says base uh, right here, contact information. Let's click on edit. This is what we want to change. We want to change it to um, the email address that we told you before. Uh, and the same thing goes for, well, the contact email, that's for the CEO, right? So if you're the CEO and you want Shopify to contact you for any questions, you just go ahead and put that right here. But on the sender email, this is when Shopify sends email out on your own behalf. That's what that means. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that email right here. So for some of you guys, you might see this dialogue where it says emails you send may show up differently for some customers inboxes. Let's go ahead and click on this link where it says fix this. And then right here, Shopify also wants to authenticate the domain, a whole bunch of authentications just to get started, right? Because as of right now, it shows Shopify email.com as an extension. So let's go ahead and start this process to authenticate. And here we go. They want us to add even more records, even more records. So let's get all this in. This is pretty straightforward. It's not rocket science. Uh, you're just pretty much copy pasting into your GoDaddy. So let's go ahead and do that. Fast forward. Okay, great. So now that we went ahead and updated everything, as I told you before, propagating, you might want to give it some time if you fail authentic authentication. But if time has already passed, then please check the spelling. Make sure that you're using the copy feature here. You should be fine. It shouldn't be a big deal. So let's go ahead and authenticate this. Let's make sure that this is working. Okay, so right away we could see that the status is pending, again, because it does take time, right? So we could just kind of like set it and forget it, and we'll come back afterwards. So you could check like in a day or so, or I'd say check two hours and you should be fine. But other than this, this is pretty much good to go. Um, if you found this video very useful, just go ahead and let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And also, out of all the series that you guys have watched, what I would like to know from you is what is the next continuation that you guys would like to see? Or if there's any new uh, playlist that you guys would like to watch, also just let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy 
to go ahead and make those videos up for you. But thank you for your patience again. And until next time.